Hello and welcome to another edition of the Stench of Truth. I am sitting here sick as a dog, but I felt it important that I make a couple comments um, on some things that are going on. First of all, um, in response to a lot of criticism that I received uh, on my last video uh, about uh, Kim Jong-il dying and uh, what that will bode for U.S. foreign policy. Apparently, a lot of people were unable to grasp the point that I was trying to bring across in that video and accusing me of uh, supporting someone who is a murderous dictator of a regime over there. Um, I do not support him. I don't support any uh, political leaders anywhere because I think they're all pretty much bought and paid for in the grand scheme of things. So uh, I do not support, never did support Kim Jong-il. Um, what I was trying to point out to everybody was that uh, the idea of uh, who Kim Jong-il was and uh, how terrible of a leader he was was largely a matter of propaganda uh, foisted upon the American people by our own administration. And of course, we cannot forget the fact that our own supposed country, which I refer to as a corporate uh, plantation because that's exactly what it is, uh, our own country goes about dictating what is good for everybody else in the world and uh, doesn't really have any right to say that Kim Jong-il is a horrible tyrant whenever we have a president who declares that he can kill anybody anywhere, including U.S. citizens, anytime he wants without any kind of uh, legal process whatsoever. So, you know, the vaunted Constitution and all the other things that people talk about is complete malarkey. So, um, you know, I'm just sick of hearing that tired bullshit, quite frankly. So... What's the real deal in North Korea? Yeah, it's probably pretty bad. Uh, I mean, they can't make up the whole thing out of whole cloth that it's a terrible place where, you know, thousands upon thousands are starving to death. But on the other hand, if uh, North Korea isn't belonging to the international banking cabal and it is not towing the U.S. imperialist line, then, of course, uh, it must be demonized. So and that was the entire point of that video. Now, um, I don't know if you're also aware of um, recent testimony given by Mike McQuery, uh, one of the original witnesses to Jerry Sandusky's uh, pedophilia activities at Penn State. Uh, this is a recent thing that happened. Um, one, one thing was that um, in, in the first grand, jury's, uh, uh, grand jury testimony, McQuarrie described a sexual encounter between Jerry Sandusky and what he described as approximately 10-year-old boy in the showers of Penn State. What was clearly elucidated as uh, basically anal rape. Now, um, they just had another grand jury to determine whether or not there will be um, a trial uh, for perjury against two of the officials of Penn State and Mike McQuarrie again gave testimony at this grand jury hearing. Now, I want to point something out to you, okay? At the time, there wasn't uh, a tremendous amount of uh, backlash against McQuarrie for failing to do anything, but it had been brought up from time to time. Why did he not stop the activity that was going on between Sandusky and this kid? <clears throat> so after the first grand jury testimony was done, some of his friends had released emails that he supposedly did, uh, which said, yes, I did stop it. I stopped the uh, activity, you know, but he was roundly criticized because he, you know, didn't do anything, didn't call the police, didn't stop it, and instead went home and called his father, and his father told him to go talk to Joe Paterno. Now, the supposedly leaked emails after the first grand jury said, yeah, I stopped it, I stopped it, I stopped it. And now when he's given this new um, testimony in, in this new grand jury, um, lo and behold, he didn't do anything to stop it. 
Uh, he didn't stop it at the time, and basically what he said in the very first grand jury report is exactly what occurred. He did nothing. So Sandusky is a horrid creep, and of course, um, I would point out again what I said about this before, and that is that Sandusky is going to be played to be the, um, the sole and only evil actor in this case so that they can get everybody else off the hook up in Penn State and uh, at the Second Mile Charity, even though it's probably riddled with child molesters and pedophiles. So Sandusky deserves everything that he gets, but they're going to set him up to be the only guy involved in all this, okay? But I'm going to point this out about McQueary. Here's a guy who did absolutely nothing in the face of seeing a boy anally rape. Never called the police. Goes home and calls his dad for advice. Never stopped it. He could easily have done so. Uh, I don't think there's any way that Sandusky could have stopped him from intervening physically. And he doesn't do anything to check on the welfare of the child. As far as I'm concerned, even if it technically he, he followed the, the law according to you know who he needed to notify and what have you, this guy needs to be fucking thrown the fuck out because he has shown absolutely no regard for the child in this case. <clears throat> and uh, by his own admission, he did absolutely nothing, and that's what the original thing was. And that's what I had a gripe with this guy from the very beginning. And uh, it turns out to be exactly as we first thought, that he did absolutely nothing but call his dad and then go talk to Joe Paterno. Never tried to find out what happened to that kid. Never stopped that fucker, Jerry Sandusky, from raping that kid. Never did anything to confront him. Never did anything at all. And this is the problem with these things. It is a, it is a continuous um, uh, climate of uh, shoving it under the carpet and not talking about it. And that is the dread of uh, pedophilia, child molestation, and all of those evil things that permeate not only uh, the school system and uh, uh, child welfare agencies and child charities, in this country, but also within society itself. How many people, if they saw a kid getting abused or getting anally raped by somebody, is going to just go about their business? Maybe go home and talk to their dad on the phone. Hey, Dad, I saw a kid getting anally raped today. What should I do about it? The answer might surprise you. Maybe the vast majority of people in this country nowadays would prefer not to see anything like that and would in fact do nothing about it. And that's a very sad, sad thing if that turns out to be the case. So, just a few thoughts for you. And uh, thank you. Good day.